Now when we're talking about aqueous solutions, we've been talking about different compounds and assuming that they were soluble in water. But the reality is, is that not all of them are, so we need to be able to recognize compounds are insoluble or soluble in water. And we'll also look at the difference between saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated solutions. So if we have the maximum amount of solute that will dissolve in a given quantity of solvent at a specific temperature, that is known as a substance's solubility. It doesn't mean that that's the only amount that can dissolve, it just means that's the maximum amount. And when we dissolve that maximum amount of substance, we call that solution saturated. So we say a saturated solution has the max amount dissolved. And that's going to vary both based on the identity of the solute and the solvent, as well as the amount of the solvent. But a saturated solution means it has the maximum amount dissolved. An unsaturated solution means it's some value less than the maximum. So if I have an unsaturated solution, I can add more solute to it and it will still dissolve. If I have a saturated solution and I add more solute, what I will find is that a precipitate forms, meaning a solid will come out of that solution. Now the last term, and we don't see this very often, particularly not in healthcare, definitely something more for a science lab, is that we see something that is super saturated. And this only happens under very specific conditions. It's where we get more than the maximum amount dissolved, but all of it still dissolves. And so this occurs only rarely, and we have to have very specific conditions. So I'll bring up the definition because you might see the term, but our far more importance to us are the saturated and unsaturated definitions. So we call something soluble when the majority of the solute dissolves. There are substances for which a very, very small amount won't, but the majority of it does, so we describe that as soluble. There are actually quantitative measures of how much will dissolve, but we're not going to worry about that in this course, and we're going to classify things as either soluble or insoluble. So when we have an insoluble compound, we have a solute that does not dissolve. A very small amount might, but the majority of it does not, so we classify that as insoluble. Now, when we look at our ionic compounds, these substances are all strong electrolytes, but not all electrolytes are soluble. And so if a substance, such as silver chloride, which is an ionic compound, and it will be a strong electrolyte, but it does not dissolve in water, that means we'd need to get it into a molten state before it would conduct electricity. So ionic compounds are all strong electrolytes, either via aqueous solution or in their molten state. So let's look at some rules that help us understand the solubility of compounds. And so we're going to have some things that are always soluble, some things that are insoluble, and things that are exceptions. So the first thing we want to look for are those always soluble things. So if you see lithium, sodium, potassium, ammonium, nitrate or acetate ions in a compound, in an ionic compound, that compound will be considered soluble regardless of what the other ion is. When we see halogens, chloride, bromide, and iodide, those compounds will also be soluble unless they are paired with silver, mercury, or lead. So for example, potassium iodide is soluble if it contains a potassium ion, which is soluble, and iodide, which is not an exception. If I look at magnesium iodide, I know that that's generally soluble, although it's because it's and it's not listed as an exception. But silver iodide is insoluble. Because silver is an exception to that rule. Now, when I look at sulfates, I see those are generally soluble compounds, but there are a few more exceptions here, strontium, barium, lead, silver, and calcium. And so magnesium sulfate magnesium sulfate would be 
soluble barium sulfate will not be soluble. It will be insoluble in water. Okay. Now these are all solubility in water. If we were changing solvent then a different set of solubilities rules would apply but we are only going to be worrying about aqueous solutions so these are the only rules we have to worry about. So for compounds that are insoluble we know that if we see lithium, sodium, potassium, or ammonium we know that those are going to be soluble. That's an exception. Okay. Regardless of what the anion is, anything with these cations. If we look at hydroxides and sulfides, they will be insoluble with the exceptions being with calcium, strontium, and barium. So if I look at my magnesium hydroxide, I see that that's going to be insoluble because it's a hydroxide. If I look at calcium hydroxide, it's going to be soluble because it's an exception to the insolubility of hydroxides. When I look at carbonates and phosphates, those are all going to be insoluble in water. Just like anything else, there are exceptions. We're not going to worry about the exceptions. We're going to base it on the rules we see here. And you are responsible for knowing these rules. So let's look at some examples. Is lithium chloride soluble or insoluble? Okay, it will actually be soluble and we can look at it in two ways. One, the presence of lithium means it will be soluble or if we look at the rule involving halogens, chlorine compounds are soluble and it is not one of our exceptions, silver, mercury, or lead. So this compound will be soluble. Number two, magnesium carbonate soluble or insoluble? This one will actually be insoluble because carbonates are insoluble in water and there are no exceptions to that rule so it doesn't matter what the cation is. Sodium hydroxide soluble or insoluble? This one will actually be soluble because it has the sodium ion. So the lithium, sodium, potassium, or ammonium, anytime we see those cations present in an ionic compound, we know that it will be soluble in water. Next is number four, barium sulfate, BASO4. Soluble or insoluble? This one will actually be insoluble because while sulfates are generally soluble, barium sulfate is one of the exceptions to the rule. And number five, AgNO3, this is known as silver nitrate, soluble or insoluble. When we see that nitrate, we know that it's going to be soluble because nitrate compounds are always soluble regardless of the cation they are paired with.